That's how we're rolling in today, because that's how I feel. <laughs> Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. My name is Jimmy Putnam, your host. Uh, with me, as always, are uh, Will Vossler <laughs> and uh, yes. Joshua yep. Doherty. Everybody. Or something. Right. Uh, hey. Will, Will Doherty. You, you go, hey. Hey. Everybody. <laughs> Will Doherty and Joshua Vossler. <laughs> I didn't really prepare, guys. Uh, we are coming off. Let's just introduce our guest. Our guest is Mike Famosi. Hello. Hey. Yeah, yeah, hey. 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 We're recording this on Monday, March 23rd. Yesterday on Sunday, March 22nd, the Kansas Jayhawks lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Wichita State. Uh, and, <laughs> sin- and since that time, I've done nothing but uh, drink and feel sad. So that's where I'm at. Now, in fairness, this is the most emotional trauma you've ever experienced in your life. Since last year. No, yeah, that's the problem, <laughs> like Mike said. It happens every year. Uh, you know what? We can talk about it. This is the th- weird thing about sports. I am legitimately sad. Like, I am very genuinely depressed. I had a hard time getting out of bed today. I wouldn't have done it at all, except I had to walk to my car, which I left at the bar last <laughs> night because I made, because I went out and I made Joshua and Ryan Dowd listen to me complain while I drank for like five hours. <laughs> and yeah, then I, it's a great time. And then I couldn't drive home. You know, and I woke up today. In basically the same mood that I went to bed with, only sober and more annoyed, maybe, because now I had a headache. You, Mike Vimosi, you watch more sports than probably anyone I know. Why do, why do I feel like this? Thank you. Uh, because you're emotionally attached to the Kansas Jayhawks? I am. You got I mean, like I, a lot there where I'm sure somewhere in your house here I could go and look at your degree. Correct. Well, it's, it's not. A, I don't have like a piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, you're not an asshole. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. appreciate that. Mike, first guest to call me not an asshole, so I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> That's my shrine to Kansas right there on the wall over there. It's like two stickers <laughs> and a license plate. That's what I've got with Jayhawk stuff on it. And there's a stone out front uh, with a Jayhawk on it. Um, This one hurts particularly bad for a couple of reasons. Like, number one, I knew I knew this wasn't Kansas' year. I knew they weren't going to win a championship. Everybody knows Kentucky's going to win the championship. And they're in Kentucky's bracket, too. They're in Kentucky's bracket. So they were going to be an Elite Eight at best. The problem is that they lost to Wichita State. And there's some history there because Wichita State... Not really. There's not a lot of history because they've been dodging them. Well, I mean this year. The point is, Wichita State's been trying to schedule Kansas for games for a long time. Or at least for a couple of years since they've kind of gotten good. And Kansas won't play them because Kansas has no reason to play Wichita State. Like, they would get nothing out of that. It would be solely for Wichita. Well, Wichita, you know, you guys are afraid to play us, you know, and they been kind of talking a lot of shit so it would have been nice to win this game because now we we have to endure a year of like trash talk from fans i hate sports (laughs) i hate i hate it so much it was like if they would if kansas would have lost to anyone else i really wouldn't have been upset because we came into this tournament knowing they weren't going to win it anyway well yeah you lost a little brother and now you gotta hear (sighs) a little brother whine about until that's exactly right until the next time they play, where it's been since 93, since the last time the two teams have played. Yeah. Okay, this is great for me. Cool. Uh, because, and let me tell you why. I was I was not looking forward to this a particular, uh, because I was expecting to come in here and like, this was all going to be talking about sports. But what this became is, you're literally talking about the only part of sports that I enjoy, which is when other people who normally get to take this thing that gives them so much joy, the one time it's just overtly hurting them. Yeah. That's the one part of it that I can go like, at least you're unhappy too now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know, you're really upset about KU losing. Very. And much more upset than Will will be upset when he loses this competition that we're in. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. So, uh, we, so we, uh, we had our midterm award show last week, which was just, it was just me mumbling for about three minutes is really all that turned out to be. But the big award is, is best co-host. And, you know, it's come down to Joshua and Will. (laughs) 
for best co-host. It's come down to you and me. It's, it's what it came, came down to. All the <laughs> other... There was one vote for the cat. That's, that's, that's right. David Kalsgaard <laughs> voted for my cat. Uh, <laughs> There's uh, an asshole. So right now, um, uh, right now the votes stand at uh, two votes to nothing via video vote for Joshua. In everybody okay here? What's going on? I dropped my phone. We're good. Oh. You're not supposed to pay attention to. It. <laughs> you were so upset at uh, losing two to nothing that you fumbled your phone. I was just That's you probably know why you're down two to nothing too. You can't hold on to the phone. Now I did. I did record an audio vote from my wife Mary earlier today, but I didn't know how to post it to the website, so uh, it's not up yet. But that there is a vote. Oh, I thought you were gonna play it. <laughs> yeah, I d yeah. Like I said, I didn't really prepare. Like, <laughs> today i don't have anything ready to go uh hi mary do you want to come do you want to just come give your vote like live on the show okay what is that uh you turned my wife and your wife into pen pals oh, and uh, my wife wrote her back oh did she really yeah and uh before i came here my wife mentioned like she's like is does mary hang out to, when you guys are recording the show and i was like yeah and she's like well maybe i'll come with you next time i'm like oh great the i'm done with the podcast thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a george Costanza world colliding thing for you yeah i'm i'm done yeah <laughs> she, yeah like all all the fun is <laughs> woo victor by default <laughs> the two sweetest words in the english language <laughs> default <laughs> default <laughs> Would you guys would you guys like to uh, make a couple of campaign statements? Um, how do you, I, how do you I feel will the say so going? far my opponent has run a fair race. Mm -hmm. um, the only he, race he's ever run. Right. right. Uh, he is taking it as serious as he does most things. <laughs> so <laughs> um, and I, uh, I, uh, he is a worthy opponent, um, but I'm afraid uh, the outlook does not look good. Uh, for him, unfortunately, he uh, he uh, as sidekick though, as the new sidekick, uh, I am for keeping him on the show. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, and uh, that will be my stance once I win. Will Doherty. Uh, well, the the arc of the way this has gone for me so far is that uh, I started out with 100% confidence that there was no way I could lose. Mm -hmm. Then I saw one vote for Joshua Vossler, and immediately my brain just turned it, like, turned on me and immediately just went, well, now we just have to go defensive so that when we lose, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> so as, as soon as I had lost the race, as soon as I heard Todd Dillon vote for Joshua Vossler. <laughs> So now I'm just doing damage control within my own psyche. Here, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to import and play Mary's vote right now. Oh, cool, yeah. I vote for Will because he's not a puppy killer. Oh, there we go. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. What? What's that about? Oh, that's a reference to an older episode when Josh episode. Joshua told us about uh, an a one aspect of his former job. Uh, as a sheriff's deputy, that involved <laughs> putting down stray dogs. Uh, I read that somewhere. I thought. I think I've heard that about you, Josh. Injured animals. <laughs> the dog I thought was injured. It turned out it was just a weird breed. <laughs> it's a long. It's a long weird story. <laughs> uh, so uh, the votes wow. now stand at two to one. Who would have thought a who would have thought a cop would be some sort of violent dog racist? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so uh, it's a tight race. Jimmy Curve listeners, go ahead and uh, email us in your vote or just, you know, and you don't have to put together an elaborate sound clip or, or uh, audio clip. Just, uh, you know, just type a name into our uh, on, on our Facebook page. Uh, while you're in the middle of uh, subscribing to our show on iTunes and telling everyone else how great you think it is. And Let's, buying a shirt. And buying one of our shirts. Uh, <laughs> you know what I did? I made a mistake with the shirts, which is, which is funny. This is very, it's, now that I think about it, it's hilariously typical of a thing I would do. But I bought, I, we bought 24 shirts. We ordered 24 shirts. And I think we've sold... 15 of them or something like that. Like we've sold a lot or including the ones I've, you know, given away to the hosts and whatnot, the co-hosts, but, uh, and potential sidekicks. 
But <laughs> what 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 happened is that I only have left <laughs> shirts that are like two X and three X, because like every like I forgot that most people aren't our size, and uh, right. so everyone was like, "Oh, I wear a medium. I wear a large," and that like. Buying a medium T-shirt just seems like such a foreign concept to me that I was like, I'll order two of these. Like, who's going to wear a medium? Most people. <laughs> most people wear a medium or a large. So I might have to reorder some shirts. If you want a shirt, well, let me know. The The good news is uh, that America is rapidly catching up to you. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> well, he makes you sad. I'm, not, I'm, I'm half here, guys. Like, I'm half. Uh, Joshua will interview Mike. <laughs> so mike how long have you been doing comedy i'll be three years in september Jeez, okay i didn't know you're doing it that long yeah yeah where'd you start out in omaha uh, yeah in omaha barley street nope no the Where? first time i did uh stand up was at the fifth okay party battle royale oh. i went up there cold i did did the you win that i did the right. first time i did comedy i made money off of it it's no all been downhill God. yeah <laughs> Well, all right. You know what that means? We hate you. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, what went wrong in your childhood that you have to do comedy? I was just asked to do it, and it's, I don't know. I... <laughs> <laughs> how do you know those guys? Like, how did you meet the people who run that show? Uh, I blame Bob. Oh, I blame you... Bob Grunet. Fair, totally fair. Buddy of mine, uh, previous guests on this show bob Gurnett. fuck you yes very accurate <laughs> extremely accurate uh but you know just going to his shows a handful of times i just kept doing it and just like interacting with the okay party guys you're like hey you want to do a battle sometime and that sometime was the fifth one put me on there win the thing and you run stuff now right or you're I involved do. you're involved in some shows yeah i run agree to disagree in omaha at the sydney which all you dudes have done. Yeah, yeah it was great. That. Our next one's Thursday. Uh, oh, it's uh. So the next one is the. This is gonna drop on Thursday morning. So. Who oh, jeez, the synergy. <laughs> 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 so. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, who's on it? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I know. I know. I mean, we're all having fun now. I know it came up organically, but like, are we really gonna let him? Like, we're gonna let him throw it in before the designated plug segment. I mean, that's what we're. <laughs> that's what everybody's waiting for. It's your. Oh. <laughs> okay, you can go. You can go now. <laughs> Who's on the show this week? Uh, this week we've got the Badland Girls going against each other. Nice. Destiny uh, Sturdevant and Rhea Dauhauser. Who else? Who else you got? We've got uh, Brandon Cordes versus Chris Dryden. Mm -hmm. Thinking here. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. No, it's cool. I, you know what? I'll I should have. No, no, no. I'm I'll, I'll pull it up right here. Who's this gonna, who's gonna do it quicker? Uh, we got Tracy <laughs> Mock versus Monty Ike. Awesome. Then uh, a couple of new guys, Andrew Morton and Matthew LaRose. Uh, La good. And, yeah, good. we just have a four pack this month, and we're starting at eight. Oh, the fabulous Ben Wenzel is our guest judge. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that dude's fun. Good guy. All right, cool. And we're starting at eight o'clock this week. Very cool. Good lineup. Yeah. Uh, so sports. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't think of anything else like i'm like so ah, i'm so depressed was it is tim tebow gonna join the eagles is that a thing they wouldn't fucking offer tim tebow a contract Didn't you that's see a publicity that, stunt yo it's just publicity yeah th there's he he's Keeps him in the news cycle he can't play football <laughs> he's why, not good at football they why would the eagles want him to come and train with them get a couple of newspaper headlines maybe Maybe uh -huh. make a few bucks. I I don't He's know. He's on GMA. You got GMA coming to your practice and stuff and watching him. And who? What's that? Good Morning America. Oh, okay. You're not into the slangs of the morning shows <laughs> and <laughs> stuff. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> TD is today. You, you, Mike. You're a big. You like Kansas City sports, right? Oh yeah. Big, now is that just? Are you from Omaha? Yeah, born and raised. So it's just are they just the closest team on the map that you're? Dad. Fans of? Yeah, Dad made it real simple. We're like the. Closest geographic teams are the ones that I root for, and, and do you do you do what I do when you're when they lose? Like, do you take it hard or do you just blow it uh, off? I used to. You're such a good natured to. dude. I can't imagine. Yeah, you being... uh, like Chiefs and Nebraska losses used to really hit me in the gut. And yeah. where after the Chiefs lost to the Colts a couple of years, oh my god, like, that one broke me. 
it broke me too, and it's Jesus, weird. Jesus, where... that was that was so bad. That was the one they were up thirty-one points at halftime, and they lost the fucking game. A high school team could have held a thirty-one point halftime lead. Jesus, good I thing almost I... stopped. I almost stopped being a fan. Good thing you let it go, though. No, <laughs> see, that one was that one was hard. Now the Chiefs, the Chiefs have been bad for a while, so like. It nor like and, and, and I again it was another one of those situations where I wasn't hoping that they were gonna win the Super Bowl. I didn't think they were gonna win the Super Bowl. But I got really excited. I just wanted to win one playoff game. I was so happy and then Well here's the thing about oh, being a cheese fan oh. and like non cheese fans need to understand where yeah, they they haven't won a playoff game since nineteen ninety three. Right. But every time they get into the playoffs, I think everybody just gets their feelings really into a frenzy. Like, oh, this is going to be the year. All we <laughs> have to do is win one, and then we win two, and then we win three, and we're champions. Yeah, I went. I was at the game where they lost to the Ravens. Like it was like thirty-one to seven or something like that. I was that. living in Texas at the time, yeah. and I just like told my roommates, "I'm like, I'm just going to watch in my room, <laughs> lock the it, door." Yeah, I locked the door. They went downhill really quickly, and I was just. But the, the, God. the Colts game a couple years <laughs> oh. ago, I did, I did get what. Uh, Jimmy got yesterday, and that's what I like to call sad drunk. Sad, sad drunk, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. Mike, you're a Creighton fan, am I correct? Yeah. Creighton yeah. University? Creighton right? University Blue Jays. Did yes. you go there? I did not. I w actually went to UNK. Okay. But again, just being a big from Creighton. Omaha. Now, how big of a Creighton fan are you? Pretty big? Yeah, I'd say I'm okay. pretty big. You have two choices. Okay. Creighton? Yeah. Well, you're a baseball guy, right? I'm an everything guy. Okay, Creighton, Kansas City. What, like the entire city or like the one team? What, what are we got going What's on What's your all-time favorite? Kansas City Royals? Kansas City Royals are my end-all, all time be favorite. all Right. Yeah. Where? And then I just want a ranking here. So how hard? So how hard did it hit you when they? Because they 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 just had an, like one of the most incredible postseason runs ever, and I don't. And it was one of those where, like. <sighs> I don't even follow baseball that closely, but I grew up a Royals fan. Right. So I got I started to get really into it. And when they lost, like that one didn't even hit me as hard because they they really had no right to even be there. Like it was miraculous that they were in the World Series. Well, like, here's yeah, absolutely. Here's how it was if you're just like wondering how much my identity is staked to the Royals or like, when it started going south, people started sending me text messages <laughs> as if I had, like, a terminal disease <laughs> were checking on my well-being. I actually know, I actually know multiple people who have had to unfollow you on Twitter because of the number Absolutely. of royals. <laughs> and I'm surprised. Uh, like, I had somebody re-follow me. I'm like, you know, baseball's coming up again. <laughs> I had to warn them. <laughs> well, um, no, I didn't warn them. Like, hey. You should join at your own risk, and I on April sixth I will post a like warning, extremely heavy on baseball. Please mute or something. Please, please don't entirely leave. How are the Royals gonna be this year? Uh I'm I'm like more of a Cubs fan now, and there's actually see this is the the so Cubs you went have from hope. one sad franchise to another sad franchise. What is wrong with me, Mike? I don't know, man. Uh. You, Maybe it's that whole. Game. Maybe I should have asked Will. Will's more in touch with depression and sadness. <laughs> What's wrong with me, Will? Uh, I, I, my answer to that would have to be that you know you once told me that the reason you do comedy is so that you can get the requisite amount of misery in your life. Yeah. Uh, because like shit's pretty easy for you right now. Like you, you don't, you're not, uh, you're not working. Like you don't have a job. You know, you're like life's good. Life is pretty good. Yeah, and so you do comedy so that you can experience a certain amount of failure. Yeah. I think that that's not true. I right. think that that's why you follow sports. That's, yeah. I think that you're a Cubs fan because you need to experience a certain amount of negative emotion, but you also need to be able to externalize <laughs> it on someone who's going to consistently fail. I mean, the Did your doctor will drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the easy answer is is sort of that which is i don't have a religion you know i'm an atheist i don't follow politics i don't really care i don't really and i don't there's just not a lot of stuff in my life that involves like hope or faith <laughs> but uh, but a wise man once said you gotta have 
Something to believe in. Oh, uh, and that wise man was Johnny Cash. What is this? Who is this? I don't know. It was a. Oh. I don't know. It's a band. anonymous. I don't remember. That's a song. You fucking <laughs> oh, Google okay. it. All right, all right. <laughs> but yeah, back to the Royal Zoos in the World Series, where I was at the wild card game that mm. Jimmy Against would know this. Oakland. Than, yeah, Oakland, right. where they're down seven runs with like seven outs to go. Crazy. And they were. Like, ESPN does this dumb thing where they have a win percentage of, like, some silly formula where they had, like, a .7 chance of winning the game after they were down seven. Right, right. But then they they tie the game up. The game goes 14 innings. I'm, I, Me and my dad went down there because, like, hey, it's postseason baseball. I was, like, a few months old in 1985. Or, no, I was a couple years old. My sister was a couple months. But uh, I was... Two years old, the last time they made the playoffs prior to Yeah, I was this seven. Year. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, it's just, we've been starved for it, but I was at the game. They went in 14 innings. It's just like, all right, the rest is just house house money. <laughs> right, right, just, right. You're not, and then they, they sweep the divisional round. They sweep the ALCS, and they go into the World Series like, why the fuck not us? This is this yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. And they probably would have won it had they not run into one of the all-time greatest postseason performances in any sport right, by yeah. a person. Fucking Madison ba- Bumgarner. The, the, it had the greatest postseason. He may go down as the best postseason pitcher of all time. Absolutely. He's got three rings and he hasn't lost a World Series game. And but... the, I think the Royals would have won that series if... I think they would have won Game 7 if he hadn't pitched it. If any other pitcher. You know, but... Eh, what are you do? Perhaps, but uh, anyways, just to finish this up, I was bummed after the game for like a couple weeks and then like a couple of friends were like, hey, they made it, though. I was like, it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can I explain to you how good you have it? Okay, but my finger's hovering over your mute button. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, and I don't mean you specifically. I mean sports fans. Okay. okay. And, and, like, to give you an analogy, like, I wish oh, I was boy. capable of caring. Because, I mean, aside from, like, the sense of community and the fact that, like, that's this huge thing that, like, huge swaths of society can all relate to each other on mm-hmm. like just to be able to be that invested and find something like that compelling it's like you get like six new seasons of breaking bad every year <laughs> right that's yeah. how good it is yeah because like you're you're it's that intense and you're like that invested and like th- there's a storyline that's going and it's gonna coming towards a resolution well yeah exactly <laughs> and that's that's a very good <laughs> Uh, but they're like, I didn't realize how much I cared about playoff baseball until the Royals were in it. We're like, in the years past, I'm uh, just, ah, it's the playoffs. It's well, yeah, like, they've been, never they've been losers. Right, so you exactly. always expected them right, the to bar lose. Always been well, so when blue. they start winning, that's when it becomes exciting. Yeah. Every 25 I years. I was filling out well, like, playing rag and yeah. sheets for people. Like, legitimately, a couple people came up to me and was like, Oh, it's probably kidding, but I got this because it's like SB Nation or something had the thing like, if you're a bandwagon Royals fan, carry this around. And where friends are like, Mike, you're probably the guy who has to sign this permission <laughs> sheet for me because you're like the King Royal fan. Well, yeah, like I don't watch college football because I'm a KU fan and they're te- <laughs> they're terrible at it. Like, we- why would I watch college football? It's awful. Like, my team has won one conference game total in the last three years combined. But they have been to a BCS Bowl. Uh, they won the Orange Bowl in 2007. Yeah, they've been to seven. a BCS Bowl more recently than Nebraska, which you oh, can well. like, hold that over. Kind, yeah, I mean, I guess that matters, but like Nebraska it goes matters to nine people. and three. Ask somebody and just like, rib them about it. Oh, I see. But Nebraska wins nine games every year. Like, even when Nebraska doesn't That's go to a bowl game. not good enough here. Yeah. You live in the <laughs> Nebraska, city. Nebraska but, but, does win nine games but here's my every point. year. Or as we put it, you're fired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, Losers. But, here, but, here, but, here, but here's my point. Even in those games that they lose, they're competitive. Like, you watch every Nebraska game. You find out that that doesn't matter, though. There's no reason to watch Kansas play Oklahoma in football. There's no reason to watch that game. Like, even when Nebraska goes 9-3, and three, Nebraska fans watched every game. So, I, I just, in terms of being a sports fan, like, yeah, it's disappointing. It's sad. But you watched, you know what I mean? It was compelling. Like, when your team is bad, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't think that there's, I don't like being called a fair weather fan. Because, like, why? there's no reason to watch when you know you're going to lose. 
you do remember earlier that you said you like the Cubs. I don't. I don't. Watch, but I don't watch them anymore. <laughs> All right, fair enough. But you'll probably watch this year if they get off to like a really good start, where they're supposed to be the team. This Chris year. Bryant's the man. He looks like a stud, dude. Chris Bryant is lighting it up. <laughs> he had like the best year in the minors of anybody they've had forever. They have a they have an infusion of good young talent. I don't know. Like they went I, out and bought the best manager in baseball. Like and, and with baseball, sometimes you can watch a season even if you don't expect to win because you're looking for your young guys to develop. You know what I mean? Like you don't expect to win, but you, you you're watching for the future. I don't, At this I don't point, know. I feel like the only person listening to this podcast right now is Mike Famosi. And Mike, I'd just like to thank you for being on the show. <laughs> okay, you're right. We've, we've run the we've run the uh, we've run out of real estate in <laughs> sports, so let's uh, do some news. You want to oh, do some news shit, stories? Yeah. Let's do that. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. Hey, planet Earth, get your shit together. <laughs> Every year, spring is 30 seconds shorter than the previous year. Did you know that? What the? Yeah. Wait, true. say that again? Every year, spring is 30 seconds shorter than the previous year. The changing length of the season is related to the tilt of the Earth's axis. It's, matter of, uh, it's a matter of what's known as precession or the way the axis wobbles. Uh, the summer solstice occurs when the northern hemisphere is most tilted towards the sun. Procession changes exactly when uh, that occurs, meaning it comes uh, a little bit earlier each year. The shortening spring uh, trend won't last forever, though. Around the year 8680, oh, the season goodness. will be <laughs> at its shortest. <laughs> Uh, and after that, spring will start getting longer again. So in so okay, so in six thousand years, mm -hmm. there'll be like a spring that lasts a week, and then it'll start get, like lengthening again. Right. This sounds like something that uh, that is just caused by an angry god. This sounds like Boston's uh, spring so far. What's that? <laughs> what? All the snow they've got. In there. Oh it's, right, it's, yeah. The, yeah, there was a lot of snow. Yeah, the, is this, how long has this been happening for? I'm assuming a long time. <laughs> <laughs> how old is this study? It's not. It's not going to be like spring lasts uh, a week. It's going to be the average spring day lasts like eighty eight point six, or what? I don't know. I'm bad at math. <laughs> Wait, what? It's just the the day. The I don't know. The oh, time the between equinox or like the the spring and summer. Or, like, winter and... Ah, fuck it. Yeah. Talking. Wait, we got completely confused here. Are you talking about the length of day? The length of the day? Or, are you like, the amount of time that the sun is up per day? The amount of, like, uh, time that is considered spring. Right. Which shortens shortening 30 by... seconds right. every year. So that'll add up because that's, you know, that means in 120 years... Right, there will be one less hour of springtime, which right. means uh, so that means in you know twenty four times that there will be one less full day of spring. That's and we're way uh, short of eight thousand. Would there be no math on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, I mean, my 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 feeling about that is that it, you said, and then it'll start moving back. Yeah, and it described it in the article as a wobble. I feel like I wouldn't describe something that takes 6,000 plus years to move back and forth as wobbling per se. Yeah, like, I don't... <laughs> oh, and it, I so feel it's like not even going to be that much, because what I've... Uh, so if I did my math right, in 3,000 years, it'll be one less day of spring. So, so uh, Jimmy Curve listeners, we don't have anything to worry about. Your spring is not disappearing as fast as I had feared. Whoa. Fundamentally, there's no way humanity hasn't gone extinct by the year 8,600. <laughs> well, e extinct or it's like a... likely taken Earth with it. Yeah, I mean, extinct or it's like a WALL-E situation, you know, where we've abandoned this trash pile and we're living on, like, on in floating chairs in space. You guys are so pessimistic. See? And in that... but here's... <laughs> I, I plan on being around. Here's, <laughs> here's the good news yeah. about that WALL-E future. 
perfect size humans for all of your t-shirts. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so put those in a time capsule right now. Or? There you go. There which, you go. Which is just another way of saying the, that is the main re- way that like all three members of the Jimmy Curve are truly ahead of their time. <laughs> and, and we are going to be super popular then. We only have to oh, wait yeah. 6,000 years. For a wall, for a Wally style apocalyptic future, <laughs> things are looking up. <laughs> <laughs> do not, you got another one? Yeah. We got, should we play this? Should we do this clip? Yeah, let's do this clip. All right. Funny, weird, uh, <clears throat> actually sports. Yeah. Related clip. Okay. So now this is now this is a clip of Bill Walton during oh. an NBA game. Yeah. Now, Josh, do you know who Bill Walton is? I thought it was a college game, but uh, no, I don't. Or, or it might have been a college. Yeah, yeah it was a college, college game. Games. This oh, is, wait, hold on. Bill Walton, I'm going to – current, like, announcer, like, former legendary NBA center? Yes. Hall of Fame center. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I know. Argu- yeah. Oh, you're just slow rolling us, Will. <laughs> a lot oh, of, I hate sports. A, a lot of people have argued that if he hadn't had so many injuries pile up, he could have been maybe Back one injuries. of the best players of all time. And after this – uh, after hearing this clip, I assume it's head injuries. Well, he's well, he's a weird guy. Like he's, he's a deadhead. Yeah. That's, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And he and he's. I mean, he 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 he's one of these guys who just thinks that he's much more of an intellectual than well, he really. Well, he well what it was is he's a guy that oh, he should have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is a, this is a clip of him during a game. American Conference quarters at noon East Carolina SMU. Then it's Memphis and Temple. So while you are here glorifying hate. Glorifying dirty play, glorifying flagrant fouls, and selfish individual play. I'm going to celebrate the birthdays of peace and love with Jack Kerouac, Liza Minnelli, and James Taylor, (laughs) who have all been big time headline performers right here in Las Vegas, the peaceful, relaxing meadows in the heart of the Mojave Desert. Sports Center's up next here on ESPN. (laughs) (laughs) When it was erupting. That last line's the best. Oh, did you? Oh, did I, did I cut it off you before cut, you then? Cut it. Meadows in the heart of the Mojave Desert. Sports Center's up next here on ESPN. Have you ever been to a volcano? <laughs> it was erupting. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of the, how the, how his his partner in the booth just tries to move it along, like, okay, Walton's rant is done. Uh, Sports Center's up next. <laughs> Have you ever been to an active volcano? <laughs> <laughs> like. It's the what? kind of thing a, a serial killer says before he... <laughs> I didn't really read the... Uh, I, I didn't know it was Bill Walton or anything. I listened to the... I watched the clip, and I was like, they're having Jesse Ventura all of a sudden <laughs> right. do basketball games. That's what I seriously thought. And uh, I don't know who this Walton guy is, but can we, he needs his own show. Can we take that clip out of context, convince people that he was a former NFL player, <laughs> and that's what too many concussions does to <laughs> The general state of commentary during sports is bad. Like, yeah. most sports commentators that you hear on TV are guys who, you know, what's funny about it is that those people get those jobs for every reason other than that they're good at that job. Like, they get those jobs because they play the sport and are famous and are a big name. Like, you know, Bill Walton didn't go to broadcasting school, I don't think. Or he might have at UCLA. I don't but... think so, because, like, until... Uh... <laughs> I've heard I've heard that there are a lot of communications majors. <laughs> well, like, like, during the, like, during the KU Wichita State game that has me so goddamn depressed today, <clears throat> you know, the guy doing the commentary was Chris Weber, who's terrible. He was terrible, and he and he got he got a thousand things wrong during the broadcast. Very better than Grant Hill. Oh, Gr- Grant Hill also bad, but like none of those people are. Hey, it could be Charles Barkley who's just like throwing out random stuff. Where Barkley he at least said is that hilarious. Cliff Alexander was playing for Kansas yesterday. And uh, right. <laughs> spoiler alert: He was not. <laughs> those are all names that I recognized because of NBA Jam Tournament Edition. <laughs> hey, you're right. <laughs> What a the, sports the, fanatic you yeah. are. The golden yeah. peak of that game. <laughs> well, no, like, but, like, I mean, they, they're they announcers just because they were former athletes. Like, Pretty much. There's a bottomless yeah. well of former athletes. Oh, yeah. The leagues knock out a thousand former athletes every season. Like, yeah. Yep. Like, and not most of them aren't, like, stars, but, like, there's more stars, like, former, like, good players than there are announcers, like. And they, it's the guys that, like, hardly played are, like, the best at 
doing color commentary. <laughs> it's not the guys right. that were like the Hall of Famers and stuff. Where those well, are like few and far between. Sure. Well, and a lot of the them, guy- like, it's also one of those self fulfilling prophecies where a lot of them are former coaches. Like if you right. listen, like if you listen to um, ESPN, just uses the rehab. We're like, oh, we know you're not going to coach for a couple years. Come on here, sound smart, pick on people. They right. need another job. I mean, I would almost argue that one of the the worst people to have describing sports to you are people who got fired for being bad at coaching it. I think of but Herb those Edwards are the people- on ESPN where I'm like, you got fired for being <laughs> terrible. Fran Fraschilla. Fran Fraschilla is the worst. Fran Fraschilla is terrible. He doesn't understand basketball. But like, and he got fired for being terrible at coaching it. Yet he does the entire college basketball. I, I I like I, whoever this guy is. I love him because he he has something to say, and it's makes it entertaining to me. That's the most entertaining commentary I've ever heard on any sports <laughs> anything. Have you ever been to an active volcano? Have, have you ever been in a volcano? <laughs> I tuned in the was Pac-12 erupting? games, knowing that Bill Walton's going to call them, and just like, all right. They were going to go on a Bill Walton trip where, like, just, like, Google Bill Walton broadcast because there's they have, like, a segment of him where he's doing, like, some intellectual thing where he's, like, in a uh, teepee in his backyard and there's, like, a dog. He's holding a guitar and it's just, like, the craziest two minutes. Didn't he also have a show one time called, like, Bill Walton's Long Strange Road Trip or something like that? yeah, I believe so, yeah. He was, like, driving around in an RV (laughs) and, like, just, just, I don't know. Here we are at Area 51. <laughs> you ever been to the area? It's you know, Jesse- there's aliens in the league. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it was, it's pretty funny. It, he's the, he is the athletic answer to, um, uh, what's the, what's the guy I'm thinking of? St- start, play the cop in point break, not Keanu Reeves. Uh, Gary Busey. He's, Oh, he's, he's definitely yeah. the sports the, world's Gary Busey. Yes, that's fair. Mm. <laughs> the, well, with that volcano question, with that that brings up a really important question to me, which is, uh, does Bill Walton own a piece of real estate that could be accurately categorized as a lair? <laughs> Likely, he he's he has enough money to afford, he can afford a lair. So we he's should ma- have we lair. should make him emperor. <laughs> For some reason, I feel like we could get him on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the Colin guest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll uh, we'll get right on that. I'll get my. Uh, I'll get my. He just jumped onto Twitter, so like follow him on Twitter and reach out to him. And be like, man, you're the kind of demographic we're looking for. He, you know what? He might call. He might call it. <laughs> he might, he's <laughs> one of those guys who might just be no. Oh, fuck it, I'll call him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These guys are crazy. He calls on his cell phone while he's in a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you ever taken a cell phone call from inside an active <laughs> volcano? That's right. right. Not so fast. <laughs> Do you guys know what confusion tastes like? Like, yeah, it would just ask weird questions like that that don't make any sense. Yeah, you, you got one more? Yeah. Let's cool. do it. Do you have any last words? Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm loving it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dan Whedon, the ad executive who came up with the Nike slogan, just do it, has admitted that his, uh, that it's based on the last words of a convicted murderer. Uh, that man was Gary Gilmore, who was executed by firing squad in 1977 after he killed two men. Uh, they asked him if he had any final thoughts and he said, let's do it. Uh, Whedon, uh, <laughs> said he didn't like let's do it. So he changed it to just do it. And one of the most successful slogans was born. Uh, why would he admit that? <laughs> I feel like just do it is a thing that people have said all over the place for a long time. Like he could have, he could have found that in a movie and been like, that's where I got it. It just seems like a weird thing to it. You know, I feel like it, it's a weird, like. I don't. I don't think like this, about it until right now. But that's a weird slogan, right? Well, I'm just. I'm, what I'm wondering is like, did this guy just get fired? And it was like, you know, I got that slogan from a murderer. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I've been a long employee here. <laughs> and you know that that saying that guy's all this money is from a murderer. You're right. welcome. Right. Then double middle fingers yeah, exactly. as he backs out of Nike. Yeah. And he's just like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, and I, I'm, I'm so glad that we can finally find some like moral corruption in this company that we all already know uses like child sweatshop yeah, exactly. labor right. to make sneakers. The moral high ground they already had so much of it. Where, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, this kind of makes sense with our child labor. Yeah, this doesn't really knock Nike down a peg or anything. No, like, but I wish I it heard this guy say this thing. Well, wait, let's check the stock market. Let's see if they like dip. It probably went up actually. <laughs> I wish it did become like a, a trend where all slogans were from like murder like people on death row's last words you know what i mean <laughs> like everyone started Every, doing that they had to do it right right like, like it, uh, was a, it was so a, like uh come eat at hardy's this weekend these straps are too tight yeah <laughs> <laughs> or whatever like or uh, uh or uh do you have any last words and it'd be the slogan for I don't know, Triscuits, and it's just like, I killed two more people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what product would be, I don't have to take your shit anymore? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, the new four-door sedan from Audi. Now, most of you have blanks, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good game. It is a good game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This is great. Or, ne or, Nebraska uh, Furniture Mart. Is that a two-way mirror? <laughs> <laughs> or like, uh, uh, do you have any last words? Yeah, I'm a bleeder. <laughs> <laughs> and it's for Tampax. Oh, uh, okay. And with that. Sorry, I ruined it. You know, I, there was one other thing. Fun. It there usually will does that. <laughs> now I'm... <laughs> Subway, revenge will bring you no peace. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of something that, like, that uh, something else that makes sense, you know, it'd be like, um, Under Armour, where are the bodies? It, uh, <laughs> Under Armour, where are the bodies? That's good. I'm trying to think of something like, you know, like, uh, Tums, this will end your pain. You know, or like, <laughs> Tums, tum, 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 you know. Tums, Tums. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, do you have any last words? Tums to Tums, Tums. To <laughs> this fucking guy's crazy. We should have killed him a long time ago. That's brilliant. <laughs> you know, the tombstone people are the most upset right, about this. Where, what do you want your tombstone? You can take uh -huh. it anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh man. Yeah, they beat, they beat, they're beat. they ahead of the curve. They beat everyone to the punch. Uh, I saw this story, and I just wanted to mention it by way of uh, closing out this segment. Uh, a lot of, you know, domain names have ma been made available that end in uh, .porn or .adult now. Like, there, I read a news story that says Taylor Swift just bought Taylor Swift .porn and Taylor Swift .adult. So that no one could have a porn site with her, her, her name on it, you know, and it's kind of a PR move. And the, the article was kind of joking about like, is Taylor Swift changing careers? But I just wanted to let everyone know that I will not be purchasing the Jimmy Curve dot porn. So if you would like to start a porn site at the Jimmy Curve dot porn, you have my blessing. Hold on. We like, encourage it. What they, they introduced two new porn domain or like uh ending i don't know what they're called yeah it was dot porn and dot something else adult. Right? dot adult they all like i'd already heard about a plan to introduce dot like dot triple x right. as like the new one how many dedicated porn like internet That's like categories green, do we Dang. need like were they were they running out like of <laughs> they were already out of dot triple x yeah <laughs> right let me let me let me let me find this this thing right here cuz I can't remember exactly. So you're saying Ted Cruz should buy Ted Cruz dot porn. Dot porn. Ted Cruz doesn't even have Ted Cruz. Yeah, I saw that com. last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dot adult and dot porn. Jesus, how did he not I own willdoherty.com for fuck's sakes. How am I planning farther ahead than Ted Cruz? <laughs> well, does that doesn't surprise me at all. Ted Cruz an idiot. Yeah, it just goes to show how much He's, of it were. You Ted, know, I've got all these carefully laid plans, right. but the biggest one I did not even think of. <laughs> yeah, nah, I, it doesn't play. It doesn't surprise me that a politician has no foresight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or is out of touch with how the internet works. Weird enough, he has his own podcast, though. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll call in. <laughs> Maybe we get Ted Cruz and Bill Walton on, guys. <laughs> Uh, That'd be a dream show right there. 
that's a good that's a good place to wrap this up. I think I think we've got enough content. Uh, let's do some plugs. Let's let's dedicate a segment to plugs. Mike Vimosi, agree to disagree. Thursday, March twenty sixth. Uh, we've covered that lineup. Go see that. That is at the Sydney in uh, Benson. In, in Benson, which is a neighborhood in Omaha. What else you got coming up? <laughs> I've got. This is like a good week to have. It's me yours. Because, yeah. I saw your Facebook status. You had like a thousand things that you had. I've yeah, it's like a crazy week where this was tonight, uh I'm doing backs against the wall tomorrow in Council Bluffs. Yeah, we just had uh David Kalsgard on last week talking Again, about synergy. that. Synergy. Uh, <laughs> yep. Agree to disagree on Thursday. Friday I'm doing Johnny Dahlgren's uh, hundred and forty character assassination show J- joshua you're on that one so is and will. will excellent cool yeah, so the boys are just gonna hang out in <laughs> omaha on friday night and then i'll let will say the next thing i'm doing uh, uh well on uh saturday he's doing the uh the much loved will doherty loves company show right good uh, i think we i think we've all agreed the finest comedy show <laughs> really have we all agreed the- on that well, now that I'm doing the show, it's the best <laughs> thing ever. Uh, what else you got coming up, Will? Um, that's enough. <laughs> Did you have anything else, Mike? Did no, I... that that covers the week. That goes through Saturday. Nice. Sunday April everything. 1st, April Fool's Day, I'm on Nick Allen's Reverb show. Very cool. The Reverb. That's a tight room, man. Yeah. Like I, I, Hopefully the, there will be people there because it's such a cool stage. Nine like, o'clock, the Reverb. I'll be there. Everybody go check that out. Anything else you got coming up? That will be it. <laughs> I will be in here one week from today recording another podcast. That's what I've got going on. Oh, yeah, I got that, too. (laughs) Uh, Be sure to cast your votes for Joshua Vossler or Will Doherty in the race to become the sidekick to me, your host, Jimmy Putnam, on the Jimmy Curve. I I want to throw my vote in. Oh, we didn't talk about it. That's right. All right. You got a vote? Yeah. Today is National Puppy Day. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go with Will. <laughs> oh, wow. Big dog guy. Two to two. Guys, it's, 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 t- this it's thing's happening. tight. It's happening. It's <laughs> happening. Uh, just for the record, I, uh, I feel like I have to defend myself. I, That's cool. It was Do never it. about killing puppies. I, all right. Yeah, this is being what? misconstrued <laughs> and I am, I, I, I am being vilified for something that didn't occur. The people will decide that. Um, Josh. okay. <laughs> well, semantics. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I never killed puppies. I mean, I've got I've got some questions. Uh, like, is Josh even eligible? Do we know for the sidekick? I mean, where's the birth certificate? Good, okay, good I, question. I haven't yeah. seen that. Legitimate concern. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I just want this thing to go down to the wire, and if it's like <laughs> one too far in one way, then people just stop voting. We're now that's fifty fifty. Get on the website. Nice. And vote. You're like a you're like a Vegas odds maker. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to uh, increase interest. I appreciate that. Uh, so cast your vote. I'm gonna end this episode by playing a uh, super pack ad uh, for each of the candidates that have been put together by yeah. their super pack uh, controller or uh, whatever. So uh you may you may notice that we both have the same campaign manager uh, <laughs> right. which is a which is a little bit of sly commentary about the US political system. <laughs> we we didn't play Ryan's Ryan's That's ad happening. either. Yeah, I'm going to play him uh, right now. He he oh. sent another one for Will. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> There's one which which none of us have heard. Yeah. So we're going to play I those attack ads. So we're going to play those and we're going to listen to them right now by way of <laughs> by way of ending the show. So let me load those up. Sidekick candidate Will Doherty on the dearly departed. With the question of like, should should necrophilia be illegal? <laughs> There's public safety concerns, I guess. But like, who cares? Like, if somebody else wants to fuck a dead body, who's being hurt? I'll tell you who's being hurt. Nana and Pop Pop. And when Will Doherty wants to pop a cold one, what does he think about asking for permission? But it's an object! Does a fucking fleshlight have to give consent? It's a thing! Clearly electing Will Doherty's sidekick would be a grave mistake. Paid for by the Committee Against Raping the Dead. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who? I don't know who let the dogs out, 
but I can tell you who put them down. Joshua Vossler. And so we go, and there was this dog that loose running around. It was friendly and everything. Yeah. It was a Vishla, and I didn't know what one was. And we both thought it was sick. We almost were like, we need to take it out in the country and shoot it. We're used to shooting sick animals. It's just a thing. <laughs> like, you have to do. It's part of the job. Just part of the job. I guess we know who the best dog on sidekick is going to be. The People Against Puppy Genocide Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. Uh, and that's been our show, so thanks for listening. Uh, so, uh, for our special guest, Mike Vimosi. Thanks. Thanks you don't for have having to. me. <laughs> I'm Mike Vimosi and you're not? I don't know. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Uh, and for, uh, my co-hosts and potential sidekicks, Will Doherty. Uh, I'm gonna double down on my position in that ad and say that the phrase raping the dead is inherently inaccurate because it's not possible to do. <laughs> and Joshua Vossler? I will be donating to any proceeds made from this show uh, to uh, the Humane Society. So. <laughs> Which, naturally, we've gone... See, is that... Is that kind of flip-flopping, backpedaling the kind of thing that you need in a sidekick? <laughs> or do you need someone who commits to their position in spite of any additional evidence? <laughs> <laughs> and backlash. I've been your host, Jimmy Putnam. It's not about me for once! Thank you and good night! <laughs>